Our AI-485 adapter is an accessory that is used to add serial communication capability to our Commander series of general purpose drives. However, there is an additional feature of the adapter that is often overlooked, and that is its ability to be wired for use in a multi-drop RS-485 network. In this lesson, I'll demonstrate how to prepare the drives for multi-drop serial communication, wire the AI-485 adapters to support the two-wire RS-485 communication protocol, and then use our MCH-HMI to communicate to the drives using RS-485. The equipment I'll use for this demonstration consists of two of our Commander C series general purpose drives. Each drive will be equipped with an AI-485 adapter. The HMI I'm using is a model number MCH-070 color touchscreen. Although I'm choosing to use a 7-inch screen here, the model MCH-040, which has a 4-inch screen, also includes the serial port necessary to connect to the AI-485 adapter. Now let's look at how the cable from the HMI to the first drive is wired. Control Techniques does not offer a serial cable for the MCH HMI. I've chosen to use an off-the-shelf, 9-pin, straight-through serial cable. This cable has a male connector on one end and a female on the other. I've cut off the female end and stripped back the cable insulation to expose the inner wires and the outer shield. The serial port on the HMI is located next to the Ethernet port. The pins are oriented as shown here. For this demonstration, I'll use the Ethernet port to program the HMI and the serial port to communicate to the drives. The pinout for the serial port on the HMI is shown here. To configure two-wire RS-485, pins 3 and 4 must be jumped together and also pins 7 and 8. Here is the communication wiring diagram. Beginning with the HMI serial port on the right, the HMI is connected to the first AI-485 adapter and then passed through to the second adapter. I've shown a connection between pin 5 on both adapters. Connecting terminal 5 will be necessary when using our Connect software to commission the drives. The outer shield of the cable is connected to the ground terminal on the HMI power plug. For best results, you may also wish to install a 120 ohm, 1 quarter watt terminating resistor between terminals 1 and 4 on the last adapter in the network. Here's my Connect project that I'm using for this demonstration, and this project consists of two Unidrive M400s. One drive one, one drive two. What I want to show you before we get to the HMI settings are the parameters necessary in the drive to communicate using RS-485. Those parameters are listed in menu 11. So let's go have a look. Beginning right here with menu 11 parameter 23. This is the serial address and this needs to be unique for each axis in the system. So this is axis one, so I've given it a node address of one. The serial mode is very important because this is what we're going to need to know when we go to configure the Modbus RTU driver in our MCH mobile software. So, Eight start bits, two stop bits, no parity. That's the default setting, so nothing needs to be changed. And I also left the baud rate at its default, 19.2. So now let's move over to drive two. Have a look at that. The only thing that's different here is the node ID. Menu 11, parameter 23. This is drive two. So, to summarize, the node address needs to be unique in each axis, no matter how many you have, but the serial mode and the baud rate must be common for each axis. 
So now let's go and look at the MCH Mobile HMI software. Here is our MCH Mobile HMI software. And I have a simple project started or open here that I use to uh, demonstrate how to communicate using RS-485. So this is not meant to be a formal training course on how to use this software. I do have that available on our Learning Center, which you can access by going to the training page on our website. And there you'll see a link to access the Learning Center. Rather, what I want to do is I'm just going to focus on the communication protocols that were used uh, for this project. So I'll start by double-clicking protocols over here. And as I mentioned previously, I'm using two of them. I'm using Ethernet, Modbus TCP IP, to program HMI. So here are the settings for uh, downloading from my development laptop to the HMI. And it's Modbus TCP, the Control Techniques Modbus TCP. And all I did here was uh, enter the IP address of the HMI that I'm using. Everything else is left alone. So that's that one. That's, that's pretty straightforward. The other one now, Modbus RTU. This is the one that I'm using to communicate from the HMI to the drives. So I'll click on the properties. Now, I have two drives here. So that's why I have PLC networked checked. Um, that will allow me to add multiple uh, slave ID. Not a good term, but at any rate, there they are. So let's look, after checking PLC network, let's look at COM. This is the settings, or these are the settings for the serial port on the HMI. So the port here is COM1. There's uh, My HMI only has one uh, COM port, so COM1. There's the baud rate that I touched on in when we looked at the connect set settings, 19.2. And here now are the data bits and stop bits that were also important. And then I just chose the mode as RS-485. And if you drop down, you can see there are several. So we're using RS-485, and I'll click OK. Now, for the slaves, what I did was I clicked Add, and that gave me this, uh, my first drive here. So if I click Modify, I'll show you how that looks. So I just gave it an alias, gave it a name, Drive 1, and it's Node ID. There we go. See, that's 1123, menu 11, parameter 23. The rest of this is all at default. The PLC model, and this is important, is ModCom Modbus 1-based. This is what I used as a communication driver. So I'll click OK. And then to get the second drive, I just clicked Add, and here we go. Gave it a name and just changed the node ID and chose the same protocol, ModCon Modbus 1-based. OK. Finally, then, the transmission is RTU. That's important. Um, do not choose ASCII. Choose RTU. And that's all there is to the protocols. I'll make this project available to you. Um, just send me an email if you want a copy of this. And my email address is training.cta Control Techniques Americas at mail.nidec, N-I-D-E-C, dot com. Thanks very much for watching, and thank you for choosing Control Techniques.